Hello Internet, Retro Kevin here. In today's video, I'm going to be doing some minor cleaning on a NES Max controller. So let's head on over to the workbench and get right to it. Here it is, the NES Max controller by Nintendo. As you can see, it has an interesting looking D-pad and turbo buttons for the A and B. For teardown on this, I'll be using a small Phillips screwdriver. I believe this one is a PH0. On the back of the controller, we see seven screws we'll have to take out to open this up. We'll carefully flip this over to remove all the screws. And set them aside in a bin so we don't lose any. Now we can remove the board. There's a few more components on this than a normal controller. I'd guess that small chip controls the turbo buttons. On the other side of the board, we can see the connections for the conductive pads. Under the board, we have the conductive pads and buttons. Here's the pad for the directional button. And here's a pad for the start, select, A, B, and turbo buttons. Interesting shape to this one. Here's that D-pad. That's quite a design to it. Looks like there's four clips holding it together. You know what? I don't want to break those. This is my only Nest Max controller, so I think I'll leave those alone. And here's the rest of the buttons. The A and B buttons are different, so we'll have to put them back in the right spot later. Start and select are the same, so no worries about mixing those up. And the turbo buttons are different as well. Let's get to the cleaning. I'll be using Clorox wipes for this. We'll start with that D-pad. And work our way through all the different buttons. Nothing is really all that dirty, so just a quick wipe down for everything. The conductive pads had a little junk on them. Again, nothing too horrible. Now we'll work on the controller case. These have some marks that aren't coming off with just the wipes. So we'll break out the isopropyl alcohol in a cotton swab, see if that does the trick. Cleans those spots up nicely. This side, there's a little mark here. It doesn't seem to be working. So I'll just move on to cleaning the holes for the screws. Just a quick wipe to remove any alcohol still on there. Next, we'll work on cleaning those connections. Again, using alcohol and a cotton swab. These are a little dirty. Flip that swab over to dry them up. Now we'll use a wipe to get that cord cleaned up. Again, a little dirty. But not too bad. I'll call that good enough here. Finished cleaning that controller connector. It looks good. That finishes up the cleaning part. Now we can put the controller back together. Starting with that D-pad. There's nothing on the back indicating which way it goes in. That doesn't look right. And that doesn't look right either.
Nope. Not like that. There we go. That's how we want it to look. Here's the A button. And the B button. That looks like the turbo B. Make sure to get those tabs in that slot. Now the turbo A button. I have a bit of issues getting this one in. And here's why. One of those tabs is thicker than the other. So it does matter how you put it in. If you can see, one of those slots is spread out just a hair more. Fits like a glove. And I noticed the A button is the same. I just got lucky with that one. Moving on to the small start and select buttons. There's not much to hold on to, and this is kind of a tight space. Some needle nose players will help. No problem now. All of the buttons are incorrectly now. Let's put those conductive pads in. There's the post for the two holes on this pad. <laughs> yeah, just like that. Now this funky thing. I forgot how it goes in. There we go. Again, two posts that will hold it in place. We'll put the board back in now. And that cord has a certain way it goes back in as well. Replace the back of that controller and grab those seven screws. Two of these have a little bit of rust starting to form. I'll set those aside and get the rest of the screws in. Now we'll polish the rusty ends with a number one medium grade steel wool pad. A little bit of polishing and it looks good. We'll just repeat that process for the other one. Alright, let's get all those screws in. Being careful not to cross thread any of them. And we're done! Time to test out this Ness Max controller. Bucky O'Hare. Now this is a Konami game, so I wonder if that code does anything. You know the code I'm talking about. Let's speed through this opening text. The D-pad is a little wonky. Would definitely take some time to get used to it. Otherwise, everything seems to work great.
there we go. A teardown and quick cleaning of the NES Max controller. I hope you liked this video. If you really enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe, as it helps me and the channel out quite a lot. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.